Hello everyone, I welcome you all for a practical session. Yes, and the practical that which we are going to discuss in this particular session is about inorganic preparations. You can see here, the heading is already there. Inorganic preparation of potassium diaco bis oxalato cuprate 2. And the formula of this complex is K2, Cu, C2O4 twice, H2O twice. Alright, this is what the inorganic preparation that we are going to discuss with. Now, to begin with, the first thing which you need to remember is that here, one of the ligand is oxalate. And oxalate is a bidentate ligand. So, oxalate is a bidentate ligand. Means the bonding is through two oxygen atoms per oxalate. Now when I consider two oxygen atoms per oxalate and as you can check in the formula there are two oxalates so that means total there are four oxygen atoms which will behave as donor atoms. The remaining two coordination site will be through water molecule or what we call it as ACO. So these are the ones which are surrounding the central copper four oxygen and two water molecules right now as far as the structure is concerned of this complex i just draw it for you and that is copper is going to be at the center as i said there are going to be four oxygen atoms of the two oxalate now these in turn are connected to carbon via double bond and then there are terminal oxygen like this. Okay? Same thing over here as well on the other side. This way. Alright? So overall if you can consider this, which is in a coordination sphere, we consider the overall charge as 2 minus. The four terminal so-called oxygen having negative charge each, so because 4 minus, the central copper, copper has plus 2, so 4 minus and plus 2 will give an overall charge of minus 2. Alright? Now along this, it's going to be K. And how many are there? Two. So when you talk about potassium, it's an alkali metal. Or you all know that generally, okay, exceptional cases can happen, but generally you will remember that whenever it is an alkali metal combined state, if it is connected with someone else, then it is a plus one charge. Okay? So that means I will show the charge like this. Any yani two positive charges, which is contributed by the two potassium ions, and this is 2 minus and therefore up big center you have a can you just check the formula okay overall there is no charge okay so this is now four coordination sites which i have shown with respect to copper and then of course if you can check it out there are going to be two water molecules so this is the way we are going to show the water molecule h2 all right so four oxygen and two coordinated water molecules and that's the reason we say here it is diaco and if you can check in the formula also it is H2O twice alright now coming to the reaction of this how this particular complex is prepared and it is being prepared by the treatment of potassium oxalate yes it's a potassium salt of a oxalic acid okay with hydrated copper sulfate Hydrated means along with water molecules. So we have CuSO4 plus K2SO4 
and because it is hydrated, now oh, I'm so sorry, it's not K2C2, uh, K2SO4, it is K2C2O4 plus water because of hydration. And that is going to give us the complex and that is K2 Cu C2O4 twice H2O twice and plus side product is okay we'll be getting K2SO4 okay so if you just need to balance the reaction you make it as two all right and two water molecules so you can check two water molecules over here K2C2O4 so two K2 so that means that will be 4K yes 2K and 2K is 4K 1 SO4, 1 SO4, 1 copper and 2 C2O4 so there are 2 C2O4 alright so this is where the reaction is uh, the reaction takes place at a temperature of around 60 degrees Celsius that means we are going to just warm the solution please make sure that the solution is in boiling okay so at a 60 degrees Celsius the reaction is carried out which results in the formation of the complex so I hope you have understood up to this very well yes now once you have understood the theory part of this particular experiment I will now explain you about the procedure of this experiment the procedure is the supplied quantity of copper sulfate 5H2 is to be dissolved in minimum quantity of water this is step number one the given amount of copper sulfate dot 5H2O blue color compound it is is to be dissolved in minimum quantity of water so as to ensure saturated solution step number two three grams of potassium oxalate is being dissolved in minimum quantity of water okay so both of them are taken in what a beaker okay this is being taken in a beaker and this also is being taken in a beaker right now what we do is next thing is I call this as beaker 1 and I call this as beaker 2 so next step is beaker 1 and 2 are separately heated to around 60 degrees Celsius let me make a mention till vapors are released okay please don't boil inverted commas so you understand this okay boil nahi karna hai solution ko okay jab tak vapors aate hai tab tak aap usko heat kijiega ab 60 degrees celsius mein approx bola hai please don't ask for a thermometer okay aap apni aankhon se dekh sakte ho na ki vapors are coming out or not but vapors are stop heating theek hai so this is separately okay ye bhi yaad rakhiyega it is to be separately heated ab uske baad the next point is the hot solution of beaker 1 is poured into beaker 2 okay slowly with constant stirring and then 
cool it in ice water bath which gives rise to blue color crystals of the complex okay once you get the crystals a solid which is an indication of the formation of a complex now next is the crystals are filtered through previously weighed g3 centered glass crucible okay now the most important word over here is previously weighed so i can also say it is empty okay uske through usko filter karna hai aur uske baad what has to be done is washing with water and finally with ethyl alcohol the purpose of ethyl alcohol is that it is a dehydrating agent so it will help in the speedy removal of the water molecule not this water molecule okay not this okay the water molecule which are going to be present because we have added water molecule to make sure that they are going to get dissolved okay two water molecules will get coordinated to copper but the excess of water molecule has to be removed okay so washing is going to be done with water and finally with ethyl alcohol and then we are going to last step is dry okay you can dry it in a oven at a temperature of just around say 105 to 110 degrees celsius and then once the drying is being done the final part is weigh the complex all right friends so this is the various steps involved in the preparation of the complex i quickly take a recap and that is supplied quantity of copper sulfate 5h2 is being dissolved in minimum quantity of water next potassium oxalate 3 grams is being dissolved in minimum quantity of water okay this dissolution is been taking place in a beaker so two separate beakers then separately we need to heat it till vapors are coming out approximately 60 degrees celsius but never ask for a thermometer okay ek baar heating ho gaya vapors aa gaye stop the burner and then transfer the hot solution of copper sulfate into the hot solution of potassium oxalate okay slowly with constant stirring and then do continue stirring for around say few minutes a couple of minutes and then introduce that beaker into a ice water bath keep it for some time okay blue crystals develops that is the indication of the formation of a complex next you are going to filter it off through a previously weighed g3 centered glass crucible okay depending upon the pore size the selection of the crucible is being done so you need to weigh it previously before you actually carry out the filtration process so we can also call it as the weight of the empty crucible and then once the filtration is done give some washings with water and then finally with ethyl alcohol which is a dehydrating agent which will help in the red recovery or speedy removal of water molecule not the coordinated water molecule the excess of water molecule dry it in the oven temperature is going to be say around 105 to 110 110 degrees celsius and then finally you are going to do the weighing all right so when you do the weighing second time so it will be what crucible plus the complex we had only the weight of the empty crucible so difference of that will give you the weight of the complex 
and hence this is a quantitative experiment all right so my dear friends i hope you have understood up to this and now my dear friends i will show you in the laboratory how practically this particular experiment is demonstrated so that you understand all these steps very well so have a look at it yes my dear friends welcome to the practical demonstration of this inorganic preparation and that is potassium dipo this oxalate cuprate so we start with the requirements as you all know my dear friends the most important requirement that we have is copper sulfate 5h2 this is the supplied quantity of copper sulfate this is 3 grams of potassium oxalate now these are the two beakers that we have we have to dissolve copper sulfate in this beaker minimum quantity of water similarly we have to dissolve k2c2o4 in minimum quantity of water so two separate solutions has to be prepared so here we go very slowly we transfer a copper sulfate solution into the beaker we will make sure this is distilled water so we will make sure that each and every component gets transferred all right you can see now the be the wash glass is absolutely clean now we'll try to dissolve it in minimum quantity of water so as to prepare a saturated solution so with constant stirring So we are getting this clear solution. Now we will take it for heating. The temperature is going to be around 60 degrees Celsius. Only till vapors are coming out. Please don't ask for a thermometer over here. Next is, we take another beaker. We are now going to transfer potassium oxalate. Which is already measured 3 grams. Similarly once again. We will make sure that entire amount is transferred. Okay, so you can see now this is absolutely clean. So I'll keep it aside. And now, with the help of a glass rod, I will stir this solution, try to dissolve it. This also in minimum quantity of water. This is potassium oxalate. It's a potassium salt of an oxalic acid. Oxalic acid, as you know, it is a water soluble carboxylic acid, just as we have succinic acid. So now, what happens is, we are going to keep this also, over here. So now, so you can see my dear friends, both the beakers are separately being heated. One beaker, you can find it out that it is going to be copper sulfate and the other is going to be potassium oxalate. Alright? Now my dear friends, you can see the vapors are coming out of both the beakers. As I said, it's approximately 60 degrees Celsius, but the heating has to be done till vapors are coming out of it. 
So now we need to stop the heating. And now very slowly, what we are going to do is, well, you can make use of a filter paper or something like that or a handkerchief also. Very slowly, the hot solution of potassium oxalate and the hot solution of copper sulfate. Alright? Now, what we need to do is, very slowly, the hot solution of copper sulfate is being added into potassium oxalate. With constant stirring. You need to stir it for a few minutes. And now we are going to transfer it into a ice bath. So keep it in the ice bath with continuous storage. So, my dear friends, you can now see. After been keeping it in an ice cold water bath, you can very slowly now see this. Can you see this? Okay, these are the solid blue color crystals of the complex which is being formed. So, my dear friends, you can see the weight of the uh, centered glass susube, and that is twenty nine point five one three. So, we can now start with the filtration through the previously weighed uh, centered glass susube. First of all, to increase the speed of filtration, we will be pouring into the supernatant solution without disturbing the solution. So you can see now, so it is so fast. And now, with some amount of the liquid remaining, very small amount of the liquid remaining, we will stir this so as to facilitate the transfer of each and every particle from the beaker into the crucible. Now we will make use of distilled water to bring about the transfer.
now you can see we are given enough washings and the beaker is also now see very clear you cannot see any blue color crystals so it means that each and every particle of the crystal is being transferred into the G3 crucible now let us give some more washings also with the help of the distilled water and the final washing now we need to give with alcohol alcohol as I said it's a dehydrating agent so it will help in quick drying so with 2 or 3 ml of ethyl alcohol we need to give the washings ok so this is my dear friends as far as the filtration as well as the washing is concerned we will now go for the drying and the final way Alright my dear friends, you can see now the sintered glass crucible G3 along with the complex is being kept in the oven for the drying purpose. The temperature has to be around 105 to 110, not more than that. 